If you're looking to build that God Squad to get the leg up on your competition, check out my new sponsor, Muttcoins Express, on Twitter to get the fastest and cheapest Mutt coins available. Use code WIZARD to get 10% off your order. What's going on guys, Wizard of Oz here with another Madden 20 video and today I'm bringing you all another coin making method and this is going to be a really good one and it's kind of unique because all of the coin making methods that we've had recently have been kind of playing off the market shift. You know, it crashes on Thursdays and Fridays now because of fan appreciation and golden tickets, but this one is actually one that you can use while the market is crashing. There are going to be cards that actually go up in value during the market crash, so this is going to be a method for you to get those cards before they actually go up in value, so you're essentially investing in them, but for incredibly incredibly cheap we're gonna go over that in just a minute but before we do that guys if you're enjoying the content on my channel consider subscribing hit that bell icon so you can know as soon as my videos come out we are going to be getting the free golden ticket this friday make sure you are doing your solos that's not what this video is about but it's important to note we're going to be getting the newest set of challenges on friday when the fan appreciation packs uh, refresh and we get the last set of challenges there will be 150 stars total available you have to get 120 to get a fantasy pack and you'll be able to choose any golden ticket you want so let me know down in the comments below which golden ticket you're going to pick i personally still think i'm going to be going with lamar jackson it's kind of between lamar jackson and rg3 are the two that i'm thinking about but lamar jackson i think is going to be the one that i go for but anyway guys let's get into the method really the first thing it's not even the method a lot of people because of all the twitch packs we're getting all the hell mary packs we're getting from all like the solo battles or our weekend league and all that a lot of people have a lot of pack fodder right so the cards that are going to be going up in value are actually cards that usually aren't valued at all and it's going to be the power up cards so really all you want to do at first for this method is really just to check your binder and kind of see if you have anything in there worth selling so go down here to program filter by power up and we're going to get into the actual method here in just a minute but these cards are actually going up in value on fan appreciation day now the reason for that is let's say you're opening fan appreciation packs right and you pull a 99 overall lawrence taylor just the lawrence taylor not his power up or anything and you want to go ahead and upgrade lawrence taylor and have him on your team well what are you going to have to do first if you don't want to just use his base 99 you have to go and buy his power up and then power them all the way up to 99 so yes some of his other cards go up in value too but the main one is his power up now i'm just using lawrence taylor as an example we'll go over specific power ups that you should really be aiming for in this method but just for an example lawrence taylor so if people pull that card they're going to want to use it they're going to go buy his power up lawrence taylor is not a good one because you can get his power up for free same with stray hand any of the legends like that you can actually get them all for free deon sanders isn't a good example ones like that but really just filter by your power ups go all the way down to all these ones that you've probably had sitting in your binder for weeks that you haven't even thought about go through and we're gonna i'm gonna show you the way to find the ones that are valued higher than the others and then if you don't want them on your team necessarily then sell them some of them are going for upwards of 30 and 40 and even 50 thousand coins and that's because there's not really an easy way to get them you can't just go and play a solo get that power up you have to get them from packs so if you have that power up that everybody wants then you can sell it so the first thing you should do with this method is before you actually even start the method that we're about to go over just check and see which power ups are going for a high value then go check and see if you have them in your binder just by filtering by power up and do what i'm just doing right here and going through them all so one way that you can do it that's kind of slow enough the most efficient is just go through and say oh look i've got two willie browns you can just hit l1 on them or lb if you're on xbox go through okay he's not going for a lot he's only going for 16 1800 coins not worth the time i mean if you want to sell them you can but that's just clearing out your binder at that point that's not really taking advantage of the market going through let's see i've got von miller maybe von miller is going for a good little bit you know, he's going for 4,500. That's not bad. We're looking for ones that are going for 10, 20,000. So let me actually go over the best way to do it here. Actually, it's not even going to be on here. It's going to be on Mutthead. All you have to do is go to Mutthead on your computer, go to the Mutthead player database. You sort by program, just like what we did there, go by power up and then do price. And for price, it just depends on what you want to look for. What I did is I sort of buy 30,000 coins and higher. Just for an example, Lamar Jackson, his power-up used to be incredibly expensive. It was like 180,000 or 200,000, something crazy when it first came out. His is actually only 26,000 now, which is still really good. So doing this method, if you have Lamar Jackson, then yeah, you're going to want to sell that. And again, this isn't the method. We'll go over that in just a minute. I'm just telling you how to identify the cards that you can pull in this method. So Lamar Jackson, and I'm just going to go over a couple here that you might want to keep an eye out for. Uh, Michael Irvin and Night Train Lane, two of the guys from the Harvest promo. Very, very, uh, Michael Irvin right now is going for 55,000. This is on PlayStation. Night Train Lane is going for 130,000. His power up, that's nuts. Now that is probably going to drop. This is at the time of my recording. That will probably drop a bit, but he's still going to be going for a lot. Uh, Matt Burke, Ryan Ramchick, Evan Ingram, DJ Moore, John Ross, Darren Walker, 
all those people are going for 40,000 or higher. So the, it's really easy to do. You go on my head, you just sort by power up and then anything higher than 30,000, 40,000, whatever your goal is, that's what you want to look for. The other way you can kind of do it, and it's going to be a little bit harder, is to go to the actual auction house here. But if you don't want to use Mutt Head for any reason, you're doing essentially the same thing, but you can't filter by price on here. So you're going to go to program here, and then you're going to go all the way down to power up, which of course will filter out every other car. We'll just have the power ups that we're looking at. And of course, if you got it at buy now price, it's going to be the cheapest ones. Now, it's kind of hard to determine which ones are actually good value because by default, it's gonna have all the lowest ones in here. You can scroll down a little bit and you can see which ones are going for a little bit higher. But you know, Randy Moss, he might actually have a lower card. This just isn't a really good way to do it in my opinion. You can filter by descending and have the most expensive ones up at the top. Again, that's just not a very good method right there because it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, Philip Rivers is selling for 46,000 right here, but is that actually what he's selling for or is someone just putting the Philip Rivers up for higher? And I'll kind of show you what I'm looking for here. Let's go to Rivers. And I actually don't know. I'm, I haven't looked at all these cards individually. So I'm just kind of giving you an example. See, that card that someone was trying to sell for 46,000, but he's actually only selling for about 1,000, 2,000. So if you went and did that, it'd be kind of hard to do. I would actually recommend going on Mudhead, very easy to do on your phone or computer, filter by power-ups, and then filter by price, and go for either 20 or 30,000, whatever you want to do, and just keep those cards in mind, the ones that are valuable. That's what you want to keep in mind. So this is definitely an older method. I'm not going to lie to you. I actually haven't made a video on it. I've mentioned it a few times. A lot of channels have mentioned it, but it's actually really, really good now. And all this method is going to tell is doing get a player. And of course, get a player, if you open it, is a 62 plus better player. The good thing for that is all the power ups are going to be included there. So what you're really doing, you're just going to rip a crap ton of these. Now you need a little bit of coins up front to do this. And of course, every now and then you'll get an elite like that, which is great. But what we really want here are the power ups and we want valuable power ups. So you're just going to go through, spend a crap ton of coins and you're going to hold on to them and hope you get some, some, honestly, some golds are actually going for pretty good. If you get some golds that are going into power ups, I wouldn't recommend quick selling anything that goes into a power up until you go and check its value after you're doing all this, unless you just have it all in your head, of course. Now, the reason I haven't really recommended this in the past, and it's always been a good method and I'll show you what to do again, I wouldn't quick sell any of your cards because I'll show you what to anything that's like all this fodder, all these silver, all these gold players that aren't worth anything. I'll show you what to do with those in a minute. But the reason I haven't recommended this in the past is yes, it's always been a valuable method because you go and you spend 500 coins. And if you spend enough coins, you're not only gonna break even, you're gonna make profit. You just have to invest a little bit of time in it. And that's really what's kind of driven me. Look, we got a redux how to get a player. Okay, it's a Montez Sweat. Still an 88 how to get a player. Not that at all. That's 500 coins. He's probably selling for 700 coins. No, so I'm sure he's selling for more. But the point is, it's always taken a lot of time in the past to do this, and it's just not really worth your time. But now it is. And like I said, the power ups are going up in price because people are opening all of these fan appreciation packs and they're getting these really good high overall cards and they want to put them on their team, but they have to go and get the power up assuming they want to put physical chems on them and then all that all that good stuff. They want to power them up a little bit higher. So that's kind of why it's a good thing to go. And we've gotten that guy two times in a row, I think. That is the bad thing about this get a player method is it does take a little bit of time, but a lot of y'all are just going and doing the playbook method, which I have mentioned in the past, and that takes a heck of a lot of time too. That's also a viable method, um, but it just takes a lot of time. So this takes a lot of time, that takes a lot of time. We're gonna open a couple more of these. I haven't gotten any power-ups yet. Sometimes you get very unlucky like this. It just kind of happens. It's definitely a slow method. There's not any method right now in the game that's super quick to make you coins, super surefire or anything that's like no risk and all that. All of this is gonna be a little bit of risk because you're opening packs and you're hoping that they're gonna have more value than 500 coins. Now, the way that we're doing it, they're going to because if you spend enough coins, and I'd say at least have 50,000 coins to spend, that means you're gonna be able to open, what, 100 of these? It takes a long time, but it's got an ultimate legend here. And these 86s, 88s that I pulled, all those sell for a few thousand at least, uh, seven or 8,000, so that's like 16 of these packs that you can open that you already made your coins back. So I've only opened like maybe 15 or so. I essentially haven't spent any coins because I'm gonna uh, sell back that 88 and that 86 that I drew, and we're just gonna make our coins back. But again, you're really looking for power-ups, and of course I'm not getting any here. I was getting a lot before the video, testing this out. But of course, we're not gonna get those here. All right, so once you finish going through and ripping all the packs here, and this is kind of all we got here, I think we spent about 30,000 coins, starting about 
somewhere around down here. I don't know exactly. We didn't get any great power ups, which of course is kind of a risk there. But we got Ninkovic. Who do we get? We got. We didn't get a lot in general. We got Chris Harris, Shaquille Barrett, and Merton Hanks. That might have been it. Uh, we got a few elites and all that, so we probably are close to breaking even. We probably spent about 30,000 coins, maybe 32, I don't know exactly what it was counted at the beginning of the video. But essentially, you want to go through and check and see if you have anyone specifically that goes into power-ups that might sell for more than just like 1,000, 2,000 coins. Now, a weird one here I noticed was Eric Fisher, and he doesn't go into a power-up or anything, but I looked at him. He goes for 7,000, uh, which is a lot more than a regular 75 yet, so I'm actually going to put him up. For auction so there's random ones like that i don't know why he goes for all the way up to seven thousand. that doesn't really make sense to me we'll see if he even sells but i mean that's that's a heck of a profit there because we only spent 500 coins on that pack now a lot of these of course 500 coins is what we spend on each of these packs if you look at all these that doesn't make any sense <laughs> another weird one uh no one's gonna buy that you know what? we'll throw them for uh on the auction house just in case somebody wants this card we'll put them up for about 17 since the other card was about 20. That's another weird one. Uh, okay, we'll go to the 68 here. So we spent, again, 500 coins on all these packs. I don't understand. I don't, <laughs> I'm trying to give a good example. And all of these are going for a lot of coins for some reason. 66 Eric Wilson. Not even on the auction house, so I can name the price. That's what people are doing. If there's nothing on the auction house, they kind of just throw them up and they hope that someone wants them for their team for whatever reason. Okay. 68 overall, 1800. Usually they're going to be going for anywhere between 1000 and 2000. Really, the entire anything below 75 is kind of going for that between 1000 and 2000. So, what you want to do with any of your cards that aren't selling for a lot is go over to the sets here. And so, the silvers are the ones that you want to do this with first. Go over to the exchange sets here. So, you're going to throw your two silvers in here, two 62 to 65s, and you'll get one 66 to 69. And then you'll put three 66 to 69s in here to get a 70 to a 74 overall so at that point you can either continue on doing working way up the exchange set but what I would recommend you do is once you get your 70 to 74 you've probably at this point um, during your gap method ripping all those packs you've got a few 75s what I would do is I would go in here to the gold harvest player because these players sell for a little more than your typical like 75 to 79 golds so if you put 170 to 74 overall player which you would have just gotten from exchanging silvers and one 75 to 79 overall player, I would just do a 75, then you get one random harvest player that's 77 to 79. These usually sell for about 25 to 3,000 coins. So I would actually put these two cards in there because whatever card you get out of there is gonna be worth a little bit more. So that's what I would do with all the crap just to kind of recoup some of your losses if you don't pull any like good elites or any power-ups or anything like that. You're gonna go through dry spells um, you know, spend 50,000 coins on it. If you don't get anything out of it, then, you know, sit back, take it, take a little bit of time off and go back at it and do it more because it's a very dry method. It's kind of like the playbook method, but honestly, the playbook method is even worse because you know exactly what you're getting out of those packs. There's no excitement to it at all. I got a redux during this video, so that was kind of exciting. It was an 88 overall that's going for about 7,000, but you know, it was a redux. So that's something you could get anything out of those get a player packs. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure you could even get a golden ticket probably not gonna happen i don't think i've seen that happen i've seen a golden ticket come out of a get a gold i don't know about get a player but the point is the pack says it's 68 plus so you should be able to get anything hypothetically out of that pack so it's a really good method the gap method has been here all year long i've never gone over it specifically but now it's a really really good time because again if you go and check and see which power-ups are really good value and you know what i'll actually link uh, on my sheet down below that I do the spreadsheet where I do the values, I'll go ahead and put a couple of high value power ups in there that you should keep an eye out for if you just wanna have a list of them in front of you. Or you can make your own list, that's fine too, but I'm gonna go and put them at the time that I update that. I'll put the time that I update that list and I'll put some high value ones that you should keep an eye out for. But yeah, anyway guys, that is probably the best coin making method right now is just to go and get some power ups by the get a player method and then selling them during the market crash. They're actually gonna go up in price during the market crash because people are wanting to buy their cards. Keep an eye on their prices, keep an eye on the market, all that stuff. But again, some of these are selling for 30, 40, 50, thousand coins or even some of them are even up to 80 and 90 thousand so you could really make bank off a few of these power ups so just keep that in mind if you want to spend the time doing this get a player method again it's been around for a long time some people do it a lot some people don't 
I think it's better than the playbook method because the playbook method is just so dry. And I know some people have been using a bot for the uh, playbook method. Just be careful of that. I have heard about people getting banned from using a bot because they, I guess, detect the same movements over and over and over and over and over again. So do be careful if you're using that method. Maybe do it on a side account or something like that in case it gets banned. You're not getting your main account banned because that would really suck. So it is Wednesday. On Friday morning, I'm going to release a video on how you can convert a lot of your training into coins and that's actually gonna be really good on Friday to do because you're gonna want a lot of coins on Friday to go and buy cheap stuff up so tune into that video on Friday it's gonna be the best method for you converting all your training some I know some of you have hundreds of thousands of training converting that into coins so make sure you're tuning into that one on Friday all right guys just before we get out of here I want to shout out the people that supported my previous video uh, Jacob Foxworth at Jacob Foxworth Chef Shacko Oscar underscore Ruiz Buzz at Coach Buzz 5 and Marcus on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel as always. All right, guys, I hope that helps y'all build your coin stack up a little bit before Friday when the market tanks. And then you can build it between a little bit by some of those coins that y'all want. Really good method, just takes a little bit of time, just like the playbook method, which is kind of the one that a lot of people are doing right now. I think this one's a little bit better, so let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. But I hope you enjoyed that one, guys, and I will see y'all in the next one.